God, we look to you tonight. Above the singing, God, above the music, above the songs, let your name be lifted high, Jesus. Let your name be honored, God. And we commit all that we are to you, God, and everything that we do. And we reach towards you, Jesus. Thanksgiving. In thanksgiving to God, our Creator, we receive today the body of our sister Marjorie Doreen Williams for burial. Jesus Christ says, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world and it's certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be both the Lord of the dead and the living. Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the first things are passed away. We continue the service of thanksgiving and celebration as we join our voices in the hymn angel voices ever singing. Please be seated as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we turn to you this morning in the midst of our sorrow, grief, 
and bereavement. Pray that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining and comforting grace, so that today, as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and love, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O Lord, our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that any fear or bitterness may now be swallowed up in the light and peace you offer to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our time of weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life. Lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow. Shed your light, your grace and glory upon us even now. And this we pray to you, almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Family, friends, we are met in this solemn moment in this chapel today to commend our sister, Marjorie Doreen Williams, into the hands of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed and in whose name alone we are given the gift of salvation. Let us then today recall to mind the life of our sister, and then in humble trust we shall hear the words of Holy Scripture. We invite now Sean Williams, followed by David Lynch, to present their tributes. Good morning, church family. Just wanted to take a few moments to uh, speak on a few words on my uh, grandmother, Granny, who uh, we're here to uh, honor this morning. Uh, I was speaking to my sister a few days ago, and we were talking about our fond memories, um, looking forward to when Granny visited us coming up to the States every summer, and uh, building a relationship with her uh, since she was, you know, down here in Barbados, and you know, it was difficult in the beginning. But as we got older, and uh, she started to ask us more questions, and we engaged with her more, uh, we got a lot more love and support. Uh, we kept up with her every birthday, every Christmas. Uh, we made sure when she was uh, with us in New York, uh, we kept the refrigerator stocked with all her favorite items and trinkets. We wanted to make sure, especially uh, apple pies and Cokes, she was really, really big on. So we wanted to make sure that we kept her uh, happy there as well. Um, and then as the years went on and our maternal grandmother passed away, you know, Granny really became our only living uh, grand, uh, grandmother alive. So she was able to experience um, and be with us with the birth of my oldest granddaughter um, and uh, Dana's oldest grandson as well, and help support that and, and be there. So that was a very special moment for us as well. Um, earlier this year, I got the opportunity, actually before that, about four years ago, we came down here and surprised her, um, the entire family from New York to visit her. And as we, I watched the video um, a few weeks ago, as we walked through the door, and she's looking at us, and she's sitting there on that chair, and we're making a connection, and my father is yelling, Marjorie Doreen, Marjorie Doreen, and he gets closer, and then you can see the smile on her face. That was a, a beautiful moment and something that we'll live with and treasure uh, forever. Um, and then, as mentioned a few months ago, I came down with my father in April and spent a week with her. 
um, and was able just to help out and support in any way I can and really spend some time with her here as well. And I'm going to cherish those moments. So I know we're, you know, sad and, and see that she's passed on, but she's lived a, a very well, helpful life, a healthy life, and um, she's in a better place. So Granny, we love you and we'll miss you. Um, and once we get there, we'll hope to see you soon. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Lynch. And this is, I guess, something that I never was looking forward to. Marjorie Doreen Williams, Mama, Willie, was a woman who came into my life <clears throat> from the time I was about three, year, three days old. From her, I learned a lot. And she gave a lot. My family <clears throat> all love her. As a matter of fact, anybody who came in contact with her couldn't do anything but love her. She was a very kind, devoted person. And I know with Bethel Church in particular, she loved Bethel and everyone who went to church with, at Bethel. So, <clears throat> before I break down or anything, she was my, my second mother. And she always went out of her way to represent and to help me in any way she could. And I'm missing her already. Thank you. We stand and sing the hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd.
Please be seated at this time as we now turn our thoughts to the ministry of the Word of God. We are first reading Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. We invite Dana Williams to read for us. And then this will be followed by the gospel reading from John chapter 11, 17 to 27, which we read by Wayne Haywood. The epistle reading. Good morning. Scripture readings from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not be with him also give us everything? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ, who died, yes, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you. I invite you to, to stand as we invite Wayne Hayward to read the gospel from John 11, 17 to 27. And after that, we invite our brother Kenneth Armstrong to do his tribute in song. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So his sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, the illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciple, let's go up to Judea again. The disciple said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus answered, and there are now 12 hours of daylight. Those who walk during the day do not stumble, but because they are the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him. Then the disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus answered, however, has been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, 
For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was one called a twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews come to Martha and to Mary to console, to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said unto him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, and the one coming in the world. Here ends the reading of the word of the Lord. Please be seated as we now invite Brother Kenneth Armstrong to minister to us in song. Great things he have taught us, great things he have done, and greater rejoicing through Jesus' Son, but pure and higher. And greater will be our wonder, our rapture, in Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he have done. Great things he have done. Last night I lay asleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, he taught the voice of angels from heaven in answering. Me thought the voice of angels from heaven in answering. Jerusalem, lift up your gates and sing, O Son in the highest, O Son to your 
dreamers tent the streets no longer rhyme. Hush were the glad hosannas, the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill. As a shadow of a cross arose upon a lowly hill, as a shadow of a cross arose upon a lowly hill. I invite my colleague, Reverend Dr. Marshall Ruffitt, to give the homily and to lead us for the rest of the service of Thanksgiving. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. 
It is such a privilege today to be sharing in this worship because my sister Marjorie was my friend, not one that I called every day on the telephone and text and WhatsApp, but one who had a friendly smile and a welcome every single time I saw her. On behalf of all the churches in the Bethel Circuit, we want to extend our sincerest condolences to my friend again, Janice, and her family, and all those who are sharing this farewell service for our sister Marjorie today. I want to recognize in our congregation Pastor Carlisle Bess, one of our faithful ministers for many years, and recognize those persons who are worshiping with us from other congregations and churches. What a privilege it is to live for 97 years the way that our sister Marjorie lived. And so, even as we think on her life, as we reflect, the scripture came to mind, what does the Lord require of you? Taken from Micah chapter six and verse eight. <clears throat> Excuse me, if we start at verse seven, those two verses are entitled, The Case Against Israel. It says, would the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I present my firstborn to my transgression, for my transgression, the first fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Let us pray. God and our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for ministering into our lives today. And we pray, oh God, that even as we remember the life of our dear sister, that we will be rejoice in her memories. We lift the family and relatives, friends, all the loved ones gathered here this morning and pray, Lord, that you will touch them each and every one at the point of their need. Lord, you know all about us. You know what sorrow and grief can do to our hearts. And so, Lord, we pray that you will comfort and support all of us who mourn today. We especially pray for her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and all the other family members who are gathered here this morning. We pray, oh God, that even as you minister into their lives, they may feel and know your presence. Console them, Lord, and help them to know that they are not on this journey alone, but you are walking with them step by step, hand in hand. And so, Lord, we pray that truly, as we share your words today, they will find that support and encouragement they need so that they will be able to walk this journey and to be strengthened and assured of your love and grace. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Our sister, Ma I met our sister Marjorie right here at Bethel when I was a local preacher many years ago. As I said before, her warm smile is what drew me to her. And so every time I came to preach, or every time I saw her, it was always that warm smile. And so when I went to Providence, I was really happy to see her there, still with that welcoming smile. That smile was appealing. It drew you to her. Her very pleasant appearance, Today it epitomizes the words of scripture which I shared with you. What does the Lord require of us, my brothers and sisters? What does he require? 
He requires of us that we would live the kind of life that our sister Marjorie lived. One of gentleness, one of peace, one of assurance that he was with her and that all through this journey, he was her support, her comfort, and indeed her love. In our circuit, the Bethel circuit, consisting of six churches, Providence, Bethel, South District, Vauxhall, Belmont. Uh, did I forget one? Dalkey, my own church. <laughs> Raise the Dalkey if they imagine that. Stewardship, we are celebrating stewardship. And really what stewardship is, is offering ourselves and giving ourselves to Jesus Christ. And in doing that, we recognize that God is our creator. And so everything in the world belongs to him. And so we are just giving him back a part of what he has given to us. And so in this journey of stewardship, we are encouraged in life such as our sister Marjorie, by life such as our sister Marjorie's life, to really understand what relationship with God is all about and to practice and walk in that relationship. And for me, my sister, it did that every single day of her life. In her, we saw the command to act justly. I don't think that uh, anything in, his, her, in her life reflected unfairness. Indeed, her very ambience and presence showed how kind and loving she always was. And I believe her family would agree that she was a fair woman, a woman who loved to see righteousness, a woman who did what she knew was correct in the sight of the Lord. Just from my sister's appearance, you had to know that she loved mercy. I know that whatever she went through in life, uh, that forgiveness was always a part of her motto. I know that she would reach out and touch even when life gave her the hard knocks. And most of all, my brothers and sisters, I believe that my sister walked humbly. She was a very humble woman, walked humbly with her God. And so today we are challenged to to walk uh, the talk, to receive of the love and care that God has given to us and to give that love, share that love and care with others. If we reflect on where the scripture is taken from, Micah, one of the minor prophets, we recognize that he was called of God to bring the people in Israel back to the understanding that if they trusted God and walked in his ways, then they would receive the blessings that God had in store for them. But we know throughout the Bible, God's people Israel were constantly moving away from his tenets, from his love, from his care. And so they often found themselves in much difficulty. Indeed, they often found themselves exiled in the lands of other persons. And so they would cry out to God. Cambridge Bible for Schools and Colleges says of verse 8 of Micah chapter 6, the prophet denies that, in, that any external forms will make up for the want of spiritual qualities. In other words, uh, nothing on the outside of us can make up for those spiritual qualities uh, that God has given to us and he expects us uh, to exemplify in our everyday lives. It goes on, the sacrifice of the heart is what God demands. But man convinced of sin is ready to sacrifice what is dearest to him rather than give up his own will and give himself to God. 
And so we have this consistent practice of Christians and followers of God who would continue to believe that coming to church and giving of their tithes and offering, their stewardship is enough while we hear that to exhibit or to show your spiritual gifts is more important. And so I believe that our sister Marjorie showed those spiritual gifts in her quiet and warm and loving way. Since this is what we do over and over again, many never come to experience that walk that I'm sure that my sister Marjorie had. Indeed, she was a soul that had rest. She found her rest in God. And if we were to use soul as an acronym, we would see that that soul starting with the S was her sincerity in service. I believe that Janice wanted me to know how sincere Marjorie's service was when she called and said, you know, Reverend Marcel, Marjorie belonged to all three orga women's organizations at Bethel. She belonged to the Wesley Guild, she belonged to the Women's League, and she belonged to the Dorcas Society, all having their roles and functions. But she so loved God and her sincerity was so great <laughs> that she didn't mind being a part of all these uh, charities that worked so hard for God, all these groups uh, that found their work in ministering to others. And the wonderful thing about it is that she gave to each one because she believed in the sincerity of the groups. And her own sincerity made her ensure that the groups were supported so that the work that they do could continue. Work such as helping others, feeding others, supporting others. And so, my brothers and sisters, we can see the outstanding commitment that our sister made to this church. Very quiet, but very committed. And so today, we are challenged to also commit to that outstanding service that God has called us to that stewardship of our time and talent and our treasure so that his word can continue and so that others may come to know that life is worth the living. And so, beloved, the example of our sister today, without shouting it from the mountaintop, reminds us that we can be outstanding and, outstanding and fully committed just by doing what we are supposed to do. No big harass. Just by walking the way God has asked us to walk. Humbly, mercifully, and justly. One of the things that was very admirable about our sister was her unwavering faith. I'm sure that all of us who knew her and were a part of her life can testify that she was faithful to her God. Attending church, attending the other events surrounding the church, and giving that commitment and faith not only to herself, but to others, because I am sure that others were able to draw from her faith. And so we get the understanding that uh, her faith spoke beyond her external appearance. We saw it uh, as she quietly moved around trusting God for her life, for her family, 
for all that uh, he did in her life. Her grandson, Sean, said uh, she was loving. Oh, how loving she was. You could feel the love. Her love was beyond compare. Her love showed uh, in her smile, in her genuineness, in all that she did. Uh, she just drew you in with that love. It reminds us of that love that Jesus Christ uh, speaks of those cords that cannot be broken, that love that continues to walk with us even as we go through the stages of our lives and experience the various things that makes life interesting. Proverbs chapter 21 and 3 says, To do righteousness and justice is more desirable to the Lord than sacrifice. And so we saw our sister Marjorie emulating those words uh, and sharing with us her life and her weakness. Beloved, if we from very early can grasp all of what God requires, uh, we would find the peace that passes all understanding. We will stop making excuses and hiding behind circumstances. And we will just live by always trying to do the right thing. And that is what our sister did. She practiced very simply to do what was right. And so she became an example for us who saw her beauty, who saw that example of walking with God. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 tells us, when all has been heard, the conclusion of the matter is this, fear God and keep his commandments because this is the whole duty of man. And so we saw our sister fearing God and following his commands to love him and love our neighbors as ourselves. This is all God requires from us. And our sister fulfilled that requirement. We are here today saying farewell to a life that was well lived. A life that showed that we can walk with God that in humility we can stand with God uh, and serve God uh, and truly obey him in all that we do and say, our sister is the prime example. We are also reminded today, my brothers and sisters, uh, that no matter how long life is, there is an end. And we who are Christians, we who put all our faith and confidence in God, believes that there will be a time when we will see him face to face, when we will be able to rejoice in the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, and when we will be able to live that eternal life. We believe today that our sister has that eternal life. But Isaiah 56 and verse 1 reminds us, this is what the Lord says, maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is coming soon and my righteousness will be revealed. Of course, he was speaking to the Israelites at the time when they too, like in Micah's time, found themselves uh, falling away from that amazing relationship with God. And they were warned again. Do we have this righteous relationship with God? Are we serving him like our server, sister served him? Are we truly walking in his presence? Are we allowing ourselves to be so directed that our life becomes a living example of what he expects from us? 
You know, every day we hear of all kinds of things going on in our nation and the world. And some of it is very scary. But in the hands of Jesus, when we have God as our guide and our director, we can be like our sister, maintaining that peace by doing what is right, maintaining that assurance by walking with God and loving him with all our heart, maintaining that understanding that if we have God in our lives directing us and caring for us, then our lives, beloved, becomes a rejoicing at the end of our journey. The psychologists and psychotherapists tell us that life goes in stages, and in particular, Eric Erickson tells us of the stages. There are certain things that happen at different stages when you're a child, when you become a young adult, a youth, a young adult. And he says that at the end of your life, you have fully transcended. You have fully come to the place where you are at peace where you recognize the righteousness of God, where you are able to just relax and have a good time. And I confess this morning that I did spoil my sister a little by giving her something she loved, chocolate. But I felt she deserved it. And so we recognize that when we continue to walk that journey that God has called us to do that at the end of our lives we are like our sister. See this picture, smiling, happy, rejoicing. And so my brothers and sisters, even as we reflect on her life, I want to encourage us to make her life an example. To make her life the opportunity to be a part of God's life and to work and to love and to live and to walk humbly with God. She has proven that a life in Christ brings you to full assurance that all is well with your souls. And so I encourage us today as we go through, continue to live and go through life's experiences, to take that leaf from her book and to allow God to direct our lives so that we can, too can experience that walk, that humble and reassuring walk. And that is all God requires of us, to do justice, to love mercy and walk humbly with him. I pray, my brothers and sisters today, that truly we will allow ourselves that opportunity to walk with God. Let us pray. Lord God, when we reflect on our sister's life, and we see the beauty of a life lived in you. We are grateful for this opportunity to examine ourselves, to look again at our relationship with you, to be challenged that if we do not have a relationship with you, to take the offer to truly come to know you as our creator, our guide, our king through the power of the Holy Spirit and our savior through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so Lord, we pray that you will minister to every need here, every head bowed. You know all about us. You know, Lord, uh, what is going on in our lives. And so we pray, Lord, that uh, where there's need for comfort, that you will comfort those who mourn today. Where there is need, O oh Lord, for peace, that you will grant the persons the peace that pass all understanding 
so that they will be at rest. Where there is need for forgiveness, Lord, we pray, Lord, that they will recognize your mercy and give mercy to others. So, Lord, we pray that you will continue to minister to your people all. We ask, oh Lord, that uh, you will truly help them to know that you're walking this journey. And even as our sister walked humbly with you, that you too are waiting with open arms to walk with those who have not started the journey with you. And so, Father God, I place all of us in your hands today. I pray that you will continue ministering to the family and loved ones, the friends gathered here. May they continue to know you and come, O oh Lord, to serve you so they will experience that joy and that love, that sincerity, that commitment, that faith, and most of all, that love that our sister experience. So Lord, breathe on us and bless us, and guide and direct us, so that we will continue to experience your goodness and grace in our lives. We pray these things uh, through the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We continue with our service. As we stand, let us confirm our faith uh, in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Prayers be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanks given to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We pause here as we sing the hymn 245 through all the changing scenes of life. And if you look at this beautiful building, you will know how old it is of 170 something years old. And so we need to keep restoring it. And so we are asking you to share in a collection for the Bethel Restoration Fund so that we can maintain this building. Through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God and King shall still my heart employ.
Hallelujah. We continue. We bless your name for the life of her whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and blessing her life has brought to others. For her service her, to her generation according to your will, and for every happy remembrance of her life, we bless you for your mercy and goodness, which have followed her all the days of her life. That now the trials of this world are over, and death itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom, and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for our redemption, we commend our sister Marjorie to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her, and let perpetual light shine upon her. We say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. We sing to him, Oh, I want to see him. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, point his souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pass my soul from what I travel, but my life leads me.
Haleluya, amén Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight to Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Remain standing as the body leads the chapel for the interment.
so it's not going to do a burial, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. We know that neither death nor life. Sorry. <laughs> The committal. We know that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in, Christ, in Jesus Christ our Lord. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Since our sister Marjorie has departed out of this life, and Almighty God in His mercy has taken her to Himself. Thank you so much. So I'm telling you. We therefore, <laughs> we therefore commit her body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, From henceforth blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Lord, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, raise us up, we pray, from death of sin to the new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial, the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, and the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people, and steadfastness in the service of your name, and the doing of your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy word is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah, we finished. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. okay. The hymn to God be the glory, great things he has done. To God.
all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions, bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing out of me. When we sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. See it afar 
This young lady here, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Come with the love of the Lord and let our joys be Join in a song with sweet accord 
Say thou givest, Lord, is ended. The shadows fall at thy behest. To thee our morning hymns ascended. Thy prayers shall sanctify our rest. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. We want to express our great thanks to St. George's Home for Funerals who have done an excellent job and we want to continue cheering our family, friends, loved ones on. Be assured that we continue to walk the journey of uh, grief and comfort with you. And may God continue to keep you in his care as you continue to feel the separation of a beautiful lady. God bless you, one and all. Amen. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you very much. Oh, I tag my umbrella holder. <laughs>
whatever it takes just to see you.